it. Uh -huh. And you just follow right along with me. Amen. 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 Scripture says, in, in the, the beginning, beginning God. God. Amen. Amen. Let's do it again. In, in the beginning, God. God. Amen. Amen. Before there was a was, before there was an is, before there was a tomorrow, yes. God is. Amen. So every answer to every question. So today's scripture is in the beginning, God. Amen. Thank you, God, for the word that you've given us today. Thank you, God, for giving us this amazing sermon. That I pray that will saturate the mind of every believer. Yes, Lord. And those that were looking for more. Yes, Amen. I pray that they realize. That in those five words, they got it all. Uh -huh. Yes, God. Amen. I pray, God, uh -huh. that what was said today, while they're looking for a word that will hold them over to next Sunday, mm -hmm. I pray that they would remember that before there was a beginning, there was you. Yes. And when all is said and done, you'll still be here. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So I pray, God, that you would keep us now. That for every soul that has not given themselves to your son Jesus, I pray right now, God, that they will make that decision. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. If all of you all who think you were about to start the sermon, the sermon is already over already. In the beginning, God. Amen. There's nothing more to be said. Nothing more to add. Nothing more to put with it. Every question that you have, the answer is God. So if you're up tonight and you're wrestling and you're turning and you're twisting and you're crying and you're asking God for the answer, the answer. In the beginning, God. Amen. I say to you all online, if you have not given your life to Christ, now is a good time to do so. Yes, sir. Because the answer that you're searching for is in God. Amen. And the only way that you'll get to God is through His Son, Jesus. Uh -huh. yes. So we're praying right now for your salvation. We can talk music right now. Because I pray. That you don't think that the next moment is a guarantee. The assumption is, I'm young. I have time. Uh -huh. You don't. We're living in a time today more than ever before where people are dying. And it doesn't seem to be, make sense as if death ever would make sense. But you got folks who super young. Dying. Yeah. Many of them, there is no real defined answer. How can you have a 26 year old die and on the report it says natural causes? Yeah. Mm. What's natural about a 26 year old dead? Yeah. I need you to understand the next breath is not guaranteed. And if you're looking for your pastor to give you some wonderful level of wisdom and some amazing pattern of great words and to be all uh, deep and wonderful, mm -hmm. there's nothing more deep than our Father God. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's nothing I can give you that will satisfy your every yearning yes, sir. except God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so today, but the most complex sermon I could ever give you, I give you God. Hallelujah. In the beginning. God. Amen. Amen. I need you to stop waiting to talk to God about your stuff when it's fully falling apart. Stop waiting 
to ask God what to do next when literally there is no hope. In the beginning, God. Whenever you read the word in the beginning, God, that means the beginning and in the midst of it, he's already there. Which means before the beginning began, he was already there. Which means he knows about every problem and every issue that you ever face in life. Yeah. <laughs> because he was before the beginning. In the beginning, God. Amen. If you don't mind, just bow your heads and pray for somebody who's yet to come to that understanding. For somebody who, is, who keeps rejecting Jesus because they think they can run back to a father who we told was our enemy. You do realize before we had Jesus, we vowed that God was our enemy. Maybe you never said it, but our ways say it. Our sin said it. But Jesus made it right. He fixed it for us. Yeah. And so, today, I offer you Jesus. Because your answer is on the other side of Jesus. <clears throat> How do you become saved? Number one, you must confess with your mouth. What are you confessing? I confess right now that I accept God, Jesus, as my Lord. What does that mean? That means I accept that he is the one that runs my life. I don't want to run it no more. I keep messing, I keep making the bad mistakes. I keep messing up over and over again. Everything I do is never right. Yeah. Everything I say will never sit right. I can't even apologize right. I can't even move right. Everything I do, I always touch it and it messes up and I'm tired of it. Jesus, you take the wheel. Tell me what to do next. Hallelujah. I don't want to be wrong no more. For today, today, give it back. Make him your Lord. I promise you, he always gets it right. Always gets it right. So if he's your Lord, I promise you, every direction that he tells you to make will always be right. Always be right. So I'm begging you right now, give your life to Christ. Confess with your mouth that he is your Lord. Then you must believe in your heart that God raised Jesus up from the dead. So if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, Scripture says you shall be saved. Thank God for salvation. What does being saved mean? Being saved simply means number one, you ain't going to hell. I know you want to skip over that and run to I'm going to heaven, I'll be with God forever. Now, number one, you ain't going to hell. Hell is the most unattractive place that could ever be described. It is the place where not only will you be away from God, which is bad enough, but that you'll burn in hell forever. Not because God was so low down and mean and sent you there, but because you chose to reject him. <coughs> and the only other option besides him is hell. There is no in-between moment, no, no pattern in the place. If you were perfect, then heaven would be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. But scripture most effectively said that we all sin. 
and come short of the glory of God. And unfortunately, the repercussion of sin is hell. So salvation means I'm saved from hell. Then it also means that I have a guaranteed spot in glory. Thank you, God. You know, we talk about it all the time that when we go to heaven, he said, we're not going to live in heaven, we'll live in the new earth, but you do realize that we'll have access to heaven at our leisure. Which means I'll be able to operate and move in and out of heaven like I want to. I can go up there and walk the streets of gold and I can hang out in the most beautiful of gardens here on earth. Jesus says, I not only will be saved, but I'll have a place. That is unimaginable. So I offer you salvation today. I offer it to you. And I pray that you receive it. In the beginning, God. Amen. God bless you.
housekeeping and then we're gonna get out of here. Um, you know, a little housekeeping and we'll get out of here. Um, you see the sign that's up behind me. Uh, that is uh, the first version of uh, the sign that will be up on the front of that building. We're going to put the sign up next week, or after this week, mm -hmm. and, um, and that will be up for about four weeks, four and a half weeks maybe, uh, and then the real sign will come up, uh, which will be uh, our, our emblem, and the sign will be the words, the Father's House, uh, and um, they're almost done with the building. Um, we're going to add speakers on the inside and outside, uh, those speakers will will be out for the entire community. Hallelujah. And we'll let God do what he wants to do. Um, that baby is is responding uh -huh. to what she's singing. That's it. To what she's singing. Hallelujah. Uh, and it's amazing. It's beautiful to watch. Our babies come up in the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and at a moment where they may not truly understand what they're doing, when the understanding comes, the activity will already be in place. Uh -huh. And when you attach the understanding to the activity, suddenly you'll get an ordained moment while that child has the anointing that you've never seen before. She will be a powerhouse. powerhouse. Hallelujah. And I'll speak that up on call by then. That they will be powerhouses for the whole They're coming up in the atmosphere that will teach them how to respond to worship. And how to respond to praise. Amen. Amen. Notice she said, You're worthy. Uh -huh. I don't even want to go where she's going. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, the evangelistic team is heading to, uh, we're heading to, uh, where are we going? Uh, the Dark Station, the Dark Station downtown. Which um, one? The West End. Um, and that's the one about maybe not even a mile and a half from the bus station. Um, Listen to me very, very closely. Tommy's uh, here. Where is Carol? Where is Carol? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, they're going to be. Uh, but I need you all to make sure, make sure, make sure. Uh, listen to me. Follow directions, please. I love y'all so much. Follow directions. And I really want to Carol to hear this part. I need you all to stay in twos. All right, stay in twos. Stay in twos. Do not break off and go by yourself. I know women especially. I know you're strong. I got you. I know you can. You can handle it. I hear you. I know you've been. You've been in the hood before. I hear you. I, I hear you. But I need you to be obedient today. Stay in twos. Stay in twos. All right. Now, now let me explain why I'm telling you that. I'm telling you to stay in twos because. Number one, I've already seen in the spirit that when we go out to evangelize, it's going to get dangerous. Right? It's going to be a little while now, maybe a few months from now, uh, but it's going to get dangerous. Uh, you're going to have some people coming to you all that are demon possessed and they're going to try some things with you. I don't need you by yourself. That's number one. Number two, everywhere you see in scripture, you never see any man or woman of God move by themselves. And I'm, I'm telling you, check me, anyone you see in scripture, whenever they journey out, it's always at minimum in twos. If not just for protection, but for witness and testimony. Because you got to make sure that your good is not spoken evil of. Yes, sir. Which means you don't want to go out somewhere and the people are going at them, they'll accuse you of doing something you did not do. So you want a witness standing beside you and say, no, that's not what he said. That's not what she did. You with me? Very important that you go out in twos, all right? So please be obedient today. Don't venture out by yourself, amen? Uh, the last thing is, I believe Carol already said it already, uh, but I will reiterate, we want you to be able to stay there for the entire time. I would love for you all to stay until it's over. Uh, today, they're probably back for a couple of hours or so. Uh, but I listen to me. The only expectation that I have is that you at least sacrifice and commit to one hour. Amen? Yeah. So I don't want you to feel offset if you can't stay for the whole thing. Amen? Yeah. And I say this more than once because for those who have that moment where they're like, some of y'all have anxiety moments where they're like, 
If I can't stay for the whole thing, I won't come at all and all that kind of stuff. No. Amen. Just come and commit to the one hour. Amen? Amen. And then if you lead after one hour, God bless you. I promise you, no one will look at you for that. <laughs> Amen. 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 So commit to the one hour. But if you stay for the whole thing, please do that. Amen. 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 All minds clear. Any questions at all? Amen. If this is your first time in this place, be called the Father's House. Welcome. Welcome to you. It's good to have you. Amen. It's good to have you. Amen. Grab somebody's hand beside you. Grab somebody's hand beside you. Hallelujah. To every pastor, every preacher in the room, I bless you. I honor you in the name of the Lord. I thank God uh, for your labor. I thank God for your commitment. Uh, if you haven't been preaching lately, make sure you study the word. Make sure you study. Keep up your craft. And I call it just that, your craft. It is your occupation. Please make sure you keep it strong. Keep it tight. Amen. I always have a ready word. Because you never know when God may call upon you to do what you've been called to do. Amen. So every preacher in the house, I encourage you to make sure your craft is tight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I believe Carol told me she had a word from the Lord a few days ago. Uh, so she'll probably preach next Sunday. We'll see what God says. Uh, but I need you all to make sure that you're praying for these preachers. Praying for these preachers. Amen. Uh, I gave you my word that the moment we get into the building, uh, that we will start ministerial training. May y'all have asked to be a part of my process of what God does for me. I will tell you what God does for me, he may not do for you. So he may give you a whole different process. But I'll be happy to share what God does in me. Amen. And you might be able to feed off of that and glean whatever you can from it. Amen. And hopefully pastor will be a part of it as well. And he can share his process as well. Amen. Amen. All right. Any questions? All minds clear. I'm so spiritually proud of all of you all. Spiritually proud of you all. I'm so proud of you all. And you look good. And you look good. Amen. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for what you have done today. Thank you, God, for moving. Thank you, God, for doing what you wanted to do. We trust you. We believe you and we thank you. And we glorify you. And we realize that truly is none like you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege of being able to say that we're your children. And thank you, God, for loving us to still be our father. Amen. Now, God, have your way today as we go out to evangelize. And bless us, God, that we might reach a soul. That we might encourage somebody. And perhaps if there may be someone who would come to Christ, that we might be some catalyst to encourage that moment. Father God, help us to be effective in all of our ways and to acknowledge you at every moment. Help us, God, to never betray that which we have claimed to be and to actually live a life that shows that we belong to you. So have your way, God. And every hurt, every pain, we give it back to you. We don't dare hold it. We don't dare covet it. But we give it back to you that we might bask in the joy Yes. That you put deep in our hearts. Yes. Now, Holy Spirit, speak on our behalf. Yes. Speak through us and to us. Yes. That we might be the kind of vessel yes. that you look down from heaven upon yes. and you be happy with what you see. Yes. Now, we love you, we glorify you, and we thank you. Yes. Now, God, let the circle be unbroken. Yes. That this family of believers would never be broken apart. Yes. That even if we're upset with each other, we'll still hold each other up and love on each other and encourage each other. Let us be what you call yes. us to be. Yes. Trust you, we believe you, and we thank you. Yes. Now, in the holy, matchless, miracle working name of Jesus, yes. we give you glory and we thank you. People of God, say amen. 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 God bless you. Have a amazing day.